So you finished programming your first application on your universal robot. And you may be wondering, how can I get the best performance out of my robot? Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to discuss payload settings, blends, and velocity with acceleration and deceleration. But first things first. Okay, now that we're ready to start, let's go ahead and start with the payload settings. Uh, payload settings are set through the installation tab under general and payload. And you'll notice that we already have a payload setting for the Roboteak gripper here. And these values are actually pulled from the Roboteak user manual because they give us the mass and the center of gravity settings. However, if we were picking up an object, we do need to have a payload setting for that particular part. But if we're picking up a smaller part, say like these wax uh, blocks, the weight of these is almost, it, well almost, the weight is negligible. Uh, these are insanely light, so we don't actually need a separate payload setting for these. However, if we were to pick this piece of aluminum extrusion up, then we would definitely need a second payload setting. So for example's sake, even though we're not really gonna use this in our running application with the conveyor here, we will go through teaching a proper payload. Uh, step one is to hit the plus button over here next to the payload selection. This will add a new payload. Now I don't know exactly how much this weighs and I don't know where the payload or where the center of gravity is going to be uh, depending on where I pick this up. So I'm going to use a, the UR's uh, built-in measure tool for payload. So I'll just go ahead and grab this part. I'll say move it right here. And we will go ahead and close the gripper. All right, we are now holding the part. And I'm gonna go ahead and teach uh, or measure this payload using that tool. If I hold the free drive button now, so since we have a, if I hit set now, we have a payload of zero kilograms. So it, the robot makes the assumption that there's nothing attached to the end effect. If I hold it, this will drop. And as you can see, it even protective stopped because it started to drop too quickly. But you can see here that the robot is not compensating for the mass and center of gravity of this part, or the payload of this part. So let's go ahead and go through our measurements. Uh, we have four positions here. This is all pretty self-explanatory, so we'll just go through and teach our four positions. Uh, I should note that the more varied your top positions are, for measuring the payload, the more accurate your payload setting will be. And our last position we'll say is somewhere right here. There we go. And here is our estimated, or measured, I guess I should say, payload setting. So or, uh, we have a mass of 1.44 kilograms, and you can see our center of gravity here is roughly 76 uh, millimeters in Z, and then uh, 40, minus 14 in, in the X direction. I can click finish, or tap finish, and I can see over here, on the payload visualization, what my payload and center of gravity is with respect to the tool flange. And that looks about right. Now if I hold the free drive button, it should not drop. There we go. I'm holding the free drive button, and no matter where I move it, the robot is properly servoing into position without issue. 
And one final note, we probably don't want to leave the default name payload. We probably want to give it a name that is more representative of what we're actually doing. So we'll hit the little pencil here and we'll rename this uh, grip extrusion. Okay, and don't forget to save. There we go, now we have two separate play payloads. We have the gripper here with that green check mark that indicate it's the default payload. And then we have grip extrusion, which this payload uh, here holding the piece of extruded aluminum. Okay. And I can use those payloads in my program. So I'm gonna go ahead and let go of this part. And I'm actually going to create a, another payload uh, for these. It's, it's basically gonna be the same as uh, this payload here with just the Robotique gripper. I will change the weight slightly since this does have a small amount of mass. So I'll hit plus and I'll do one point, let's say 1.8 kilograms instead, 57.5 center of gravity. And I'll actually use this payload setting in the program. Okay, now that we have the payloads configured in our installation, we can incorporate those payloads into our program. And we're gonna wanna incorporate those payloads whenever we're picking up a part and we're placing a part because that's when the payload is actually gonna be changing. So let's go ahead and go through our program. Let's find the first line where we pick the part. This is our pick location here and we close our gripper here, so that's where we're gonna to wanna to change our payload. So we select the grip close location, uh, we hit set payload, and we select the wax cube payload that we set before. And then we'll have to change it back once we place the part back onto the belt. And that's simply right after the place waypoint, at this move where it opens the gripper, and we'll go ahead and set the payload, and it is set to gripper here. So let's verify. We move to our pick location, we close our gripper, we set our payload to pick the part, we move to the place location, we open our gripper, and we set the payload to just the gripper without the part. Easy as that. Okay, now that we have configured our payloads in the installation tab and incorporated those payloads in our program, let's go ahead and take a look at how blends can uh, increase the performance of our application. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and run the, our, our current uh, program here. It's a simple pick and place. We're gonna pick the block from here. We're gonna place it over here. I'm gonna let it run through a couple of times. And you'll notice that we have an approach location here. We have an approach location over here. So the application, in short, we pick up the block from here after the sensor is made, we put it down over here, we move back to our approach location, we wait for the sensor to be made, we, move, we pick and repeat forever. Um, we can use blends because uh, we don't necessarily need to say, we don't need to stop here and here when we're after we've picked up the part and we're on our way to our place location. So we can take advantage of blends to uh, continuously move through those points as we're moving to our place location. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, our, you'll see here, this is our first move for our approach pick. We do not want a blend anywhere there is not another waypoint immediately after. So this approach pick location, since we are waiting for this conveyor sensor, we do not want to place a blend in that particular waypoint. So let's go ahead and look at our second approach pick move here. It's the same waypoint, but the Waypoint deliberately after or immediately after that is the approach place location. So we can blend through our approach pick and we can also blend through 
our approach place. Um, let's see if there's any other waypoints in here uh, we can blend through. Yeah, here we go. We have this approach place here at the very end of the program that we could blend through because immediately after that waypoint is at the very top of the program, the approach pick here. So let's go ahead and add some blends through those three waypoints. So the first approach pick here, we'll add a blend of 50 millimeters. Now we want to keep in mind that our blend radius needs to be less than the distance from these two points here, and we need to keep in mind that the blend radi that it will start moving to the next position once we get within that blend radius setting. So 50 millimeters from the pick point, which is here, which is probably roughly somewhere up here, it'll start moving to the approach pick. So that's plenty of space to not crash or uh, skip this uh, waypoint because if our blend radius is too large, let's say we made it 200 millimeters, so somewhere up here, the blend will actually skip this waypoint and it will go immediately from this position to the next waypoint. And then it wouldn't make any sense to have that waypoint in the program at all when you can just move from that one to this one. So that's our first blend on approach pick. So we'll also blend through, we'll say 50 millimeters through the approach place. And we also had the second approach place, which we can blend through as well. Now when we run the program, we should see smoother motion from our pick in place. See, and it no longer stops. In fact, let's go ahead and increase the blend radiuses. We can probably get away with 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters. So we have the blend through here, here, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and play that. And we can see the difference between the 50 and 100 millimeter blends. So our motion is a lot smoother. We're not actually stopping at our approach locations. That's good. I'd say better performance there. But we didn't really save Uh, too much cycle time. Uh, so let's go ahead and increase our acceleration, uh, D, or, yeah, XL, decel, and velocities. Okay. And the easiest way to do that is to change the move type acceleration. So everything under this move J will be updated to our new speeds. So we'll go ahead and actually double it. And our acceleration we will double as well. Now we want to keep in mind when we're changing these uh, joint accelerations, if you make it uh, too large of an acceleration, we're going to see jerking motion on the robot, which is not good for the longevity of the robot and potentially for the application. You could you know, drop parts or, or damage something else. Uh, let's go ahead and update the tool speed of the move L. We will double this as well. And the move J, same thing. And then the last move L for placing. All right, let's see what our application looks like now. Okay, you can see in combination with our blends and our increased speeds, we have a much better performing application. And that concludes this video 
about some best practices for programming your UR.